Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to round seven coverage of the U.S. Chess Championships in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, for this round, I was going to focus mostly on the game between uh, Nakamura and Akobian. Um, but also at the end, after I go over that game, there were a couple of other games that had some uh, interesting tactics. So I will show them as well. But uh, well, let's take a look at this uh, Nakamura Akobian game. Nakamura has the white pieces. Virujan Akobian uh, is not having a good tournament. He's uh, near the bottom of the table. So he tried to play something solid this time. e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6. The uh, Russian defense or the uh, Petrov, Petrov defense or Russian game. Uh, so yeah, this has a reputation of being um, <clears throat> pretty solid for black. Not, uh, not too many winning chances for black, but a, a good way to uh, uh, get a solid position and, and hold a draw. Um, well, let's see what Hikaru does against this strategy. Knight takes e5. We follow the main line for a long time. d6, kicking the knight back. <laughs> there is the uh, crazy Cochrane gambit taking the uh, pawn there, but you don't see that too often. <laughs> the knight drops back to f3. Uh, knight takes e4. And then d4, d5. So um, black has got this knight in the center. And uh, white is going to try and chase it away, starting with bishop d3. Bishop e7 was played here. It's all very logical. Um, let's see. I think the, the move order, I don't know if this really matters, but it's typical to play knight to c6 before bishop e7, but we transpose back into the main line. Um, the bishop e7 it was like the third choice in that position, but after knight c6, we're back into the main line. And c4. <clears throat> so still the main line uh, uh, Petrov defense. Knight to b4, hitting this bishop here. And then the bishop goes to uh, e2. So the bishop doesn't want to give itself up for a knight at this point. And the knights look a bit ominous here, but it turns out there's nothing they can do um, at the moment. They're just going to hang around there and, and look threatening. And white will uh, continue developing pieces and, and threaten to trade things off. Now this bishop comes out to uh, f5. Lending a little extra support to this knight here. And now finally, uh, white gets ready to uh, start to uh, push back with a3, kicking this knight away. Um, at this point, um, black takes, pawn takes, and then retreats this knight back to c6. And now rookie one <clears throat> is all still the main line of the, uh, the main line of the Petrov defense, Ricky eight. And it's all pretty logical play. Both sides are getting their pieces out. And... Um, here is the departure. So the main line would continue. Uh, C takes d5, queen takes d5, and bishop to f4. There's another case where bishop f4 could have been played first, or pawn takes. But anyway, you get to this position. And um, a very typical position in the uh, Petrov defense. We see that white has a little more influence and maybe a little more space because of that. But overall, a very even position. And uh, black is just completely solid, no pawn, no defects in his pawn structure, and um, both sides have the bishop pair, so neither side has has a big advantage here, except for, as I said, the slight edge that white has due to the extra space and the extra center pawn. So, um, yeah, slight edge to white, but uh, that's a position that black has played many times and uh, has managed to hold it pretty often. So Hikaru uh, plays something different here. He plays a sideline with uh, Rook to a2. Pretty interesting and uh, maybe not the first move you would think of in this position, but uh, well this uh, rook has uh, scope along the second rank here and um, <clears throat> it's interesting to see how Hikaru takes advantage of this. Now this is not a novelty yet. This has been played before. Knight a5. All the games went like this. Knight a5 um, hitting the C pawn. So now this, this pawn trades out. Queen comes forward. Similarly to what we saw and now rook to uh, b2, maybe maybe putting a little pressure on the b pawn, although it's it's adequately defended by both the knight and the queen at the moment, so it doesn't seem to be a real problem. Oh, I know what the threat is. The threat is rook to uh, rook to uh, b5 there, forking the queen and the uh, knight. So c6 is played to control that b5 square. And now, <clears throat> in the past, um, the move queen to a4 has been played. Um, and that is a dual purpose move, putting pressure on the knight and defending this uh, pawn, which is under fire from black's bishop. 
So right here is where uh, Nakamura plays a novelty. He doesn't go with this queen a4, which apparently apparently leads to uh, an even position. So nothing nothing great for white after that move. Knight to e5 is the new move here, just giving up the pawn. So uh, Virgin takes the pawn and um, is still okay in this position, although it turns out that um, uh, white has uh, compensation for the pawn, so white is still okay. It's not like uh, black is a pawn up. White, white has enough compensation and, uh, and is doing uh, pretty well with peace activity here. Bishop to f3, kicking the queen, so not responding immediately to the threat on the rook, but uh, buying a little bit of time and opening up the e2 square. So now when the queen drops back, getting away from the bishop, this rook swings across. And so now we, we see the point of that journey that uh, is a very useful role for the rook here um, and creating some pressure along the open e-file. So um, the game continues. Bishop takes, queen takes, and now bishop to e6, plugging up that, um, plugging up the e-file for the moment. So uh, bishop to e4 was played. Um, Hikaru starts to line up against the king side, rook a to d8, centralizing the rook, seems like. Reasonable moves, queen to b1, now the queen and the bishop form a battery, so g6 to uh, block that. <clears throat> and now f4, so no fooling around. We had a series of very uh, very forceful moves from Hikaru, one after the other, making threats, and uh, now this is uh, just just threatening to open up the king side and, and break through. And Akobian goes for a counterattack in the center, typical strategy to uh, meet a, an attack on the wing with a counter attack in the center and um, it appears this is still okay but he has to find in this position exactly the right move he had a different idea here but uh, after checking with the chess engine it seems like um, there's only one move for black <laughs> only one move for black in this position that uh, that uh, keeps it about even so black is still actually okay but he has to find this one move and of course this can be really difficult without the aid of a chess engine uh, in a, in a real-time game when the clock is ticking. We're on move 24, but um, I'm sure you had time, but um, you know, still you have to conserve some time. You have to get all 40 moves in before two hours are up. Um, so the one move that saves it is um, not a move I would think of, <laughs> I have to say. It's bishop to b3. So let's put that on the board. Just moving this bishop away from, um, away from that pawn and, uh, but keeping it on this diagonal so it still is looking back at the king side. It's also maybe blocking the queen from coming in along the b-file in some lines. Um, it's kind of a mysterious move. Maybe it's just one of the few places on the board where the bishop is safe and still uh, keeps in contact with the king side. If it moves back along, along, if it moves back along this direction, then, uh, then maybe there's not enough defense for the king side. But it seems that... Um, there's no way for black to really, or white, white to really break through. The, the attack looks kind of threatening, but, uh, well, for example, f takes, h takes, and now bishop takes b7. Um, white can get a pawn, and um, let's see, if black takes, then uh, white will take the bishop. So um, that's, that's a useful move from white, and also it starts to open up this file with threats against the rook. So, for example, if this knight could move with tempo, maybe knight to c, uh, f knight to c4, they're hitting the queen. That would open up an attack on this uh, rook here. So, um, but just queen to c7, hitting the bishop. Bishop drops back to f3 and king up to g7. And it seems like um, seems like uh, black is holding this position. There's no no great way for white to break through, and so this would this would be okay. <clears throat> okay for um, black. Funny move, bishop to b3. So Cobian had a different idea, uh, and his idea almost worked. So let's let's check it out. Played c takes d4, um, giving up a piece here, but getting a very dangerous passed pawn. Uh, Hikaru takes the piece, bishop pawn takes, and now um, rook takes e6, grabbing that pawn, threatening the knight. And, uh, and here's the point. If the knight just drops back to f3, then um, d takes c3. This is Jacobian's idea. And this advanced pawn and, uh, and is relatively safe king compared to what happens in the game. 
Um, this is uh, good compensation for the piece. And in fact, uh, black can hold this position. So say, for example, queen c1, <clears throat> looking at the uh, pawn and getting in front of it, uh, queen to c5 check, getting behind the pawn, and knight to b3. And uh, it is true, if you just count material, that uh, black actually has four pawns for the piece, um, <clears throat> which is uh, usually three pawns is enough. And, and he also has this advanced pawn. Um, the chess engine still rates this as about even, so there's probably a lot of uh, counterplay for white against the black king here. But this was a Cobian's idea, and uh, it would have been uh, good, good for black. But, um, <clears throat> but it's not uh, forced. The retreat of the knight is not forced, and Hikaru decided instead to give the piece back. He's a piece up. He can give the piece back and uh, help destroy the pawn cover around white's king by playing knight takes f7. And now uh, king takes is really <clears throat> the only way to take that knight. And if you don't take it, uh, then your, your king is disrupted for no... Your, your, your pawn cover has still been disrupted, so you might as well grab the piece. So that's the best move there. And now um, Nakamura's idea here. There's, there's a nice tactical idea right in this move if you want to pause the video and guess the, uh, guess the continuation. It's white's turn to move here. Okay, the, the move that uh, Nakamura played is bishop to d5. Very nice move. It's a temporary pin on this uh, rook, and then uh, after queen takes bishop, uh, he can take the rook. Um, it was also, if you spotted this idea, queen to a2, um, that's also an idea of pinning that uh, rook. But the move that Hikaru played was bishop to d5. So the queen takes, the rook takes, and... Um, and if black keeps taking, which is possible, queen takes, was not played, but queen takes, rook takes, king takes. At the end of all this, uh, Nakamura has the move queen to e4 check, rounding up this pawn. And it'll be a situation where he's got a queen against uh, rook knight and uh, one extra pawn for black. But uh, with the exposed king and the pieces kind of on the periphery here, actually this is, uh, this is just uh, better for white. White is winning here. So um, at this point, Jacobian didn't uh, keep exchanging, but played d takes c3, going back to this idea of getting the advanced pass pawn and trying to use that as leverage. So he's got this pawn and two other pawns. So he has three pawns, uh, and he's just down the exchange. So usually, you know, two pawns, sometimes even one pawn is enough compensation for the exchange. Uh, but the problem is that uh, it's not about the material in this case. It's about the fact that his uh, king is exposed and, uh, and white's pieces are very active. So Nakamura starts with rook to e5, hitting the queen and threatening the knight behind it. So queen to d4, moving, cancel that, queen to d4, check. Moving away from the rook with tempo, hitting the king, king moves, and now b6, defending the knight. And it appears this is the... Uh, that the mistake that uh, causes him to go downhill uh, pretty quickly, but um, other tries don't work as well. So one example I, I looked at was uh, rook d5. How about just using the rook to defend? And also there's problems along this diagonal, um, and uh, queen a2 now can be blocked by knight to c5. That's the idea in this line. But after this exchange, rook takes, rook takes, <clears throat> cancel that. Let's see. It's white's move. Rook takes d5. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. A little bit confused there. Rook takes d5. Queen takes d5. Uh, then queen f2 check. It's not about grabbing the pawn here. It's about bringing the queen over with check. And you'll see, similar to the game, that uh, black's king is exposed. And, uh, and the queen and the rook here are too much. White wins from this position. So going back to the game, um, he played b6, just defending the knight. And now queen a2 check. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, white just breaks through after this. The king is on the run, but doesn't ever find safety. He goes to g7, the rook comes into e7. King goes to h6, the queen comes into f7. And uh, you can see this is not going to end well. Although he gamely played on, 
Let's see, knight to c4, trying to bring his knight back into the game. Queen takes h7 check, driving the king further out in the open. Um, let's see, rook to um, e6. Oh, it's white's turn. Rook 7 to e6, piling up on the g-pawn. Queen to d3, defending it. And now uh, h4 check, hitting the king. King comes forward once again to f4. Um, oh, the king came forward to f4. Uh, queen h6 was played, and he resigned. So uh, queen g5 is happening with mate threats, uh, and, uh, and there's nothing he can do about it. The way to survive the longest is uh, king g3, queen g5 check. Uh, king f2, kind of a funny, kind of a funny line. Queen f4 check, the queen interposes, and queen takes, and the uh, king is baited here on f2. So uh, yeah, there was just no escape after uh, that queen a2 check actually, but after queen h6 check, this is when Kobian resigned. So uh, anyway, nice nice win from Nakamura. Allowed him. He's he's not had a great tournament so far, but allowed him to gain. Uh, half a point on his uh, on the leader of the tournament. Uh, Fabiano only drew today. Um, I mentioned, yeah, there was a couple of other games or tactics that I want to show you. This, uh, let's skip forward to the key position here. Uh, this is the game uh, Nazi Paikidze against Agata Baikopsev. And uh, uh, Paikidze has the white pieces. And she played a nice game, actually, if you're a fan of uh, Chess Explained. You might uh, you might enjoy this game because uh, uh, Paikidze played a um, Reti opening, uh, got the double fianchetto going, and uh, it was a very smooth looking game, and um, kind of mysterious to me. I, I don't play this chess. <laughs> this style of chess is not uh, the style of chess that I play. Uh, a, a very smooth looking game where it seems like White always had a little something, but it's, it's, it's hard to quantify exactly what. I mean, even in this position. Uh, the chess engine rates white as better, but uh, you know it's it's not clear to me. If you just count the material, it looks about even. I guess what is clear is that uh, black's pieces have been driven back into a defensive formation here. I guess that's that's something you can point to as as a clear advantage to uh, white. Anyway, um, uh, Nazi Paikidze plays uh, rook c2 here, just defending against any potential checks along the second rank, and uh, right here. Um, there's a mistake. So um, Agata needs to play something like uh, rook to e8, just moving this rook back, maybe hitting the knight, staying on the back rank is uh, what um, is the basic idea here, um, keeping keeping the rook around for defense. Instead, the, the rook came forward to a4, and so now there's a nice... Uh, a nice uh, winning sequence here. So see if you can uh, spot the ideas for white in this position. How would you proceed if you had the white pieces here? Okay, uh, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away now. It's kind of just a pretty simple two-move sequence and, and, uh, and uh, black collapses. So knight takes g7, getting rid of one of the defenders around the king dragging the king forward and also uh, creating a pin on this diagonal and then the second move queen to f4 exploiting the pin and uh, there's no way to defend this uh, e-pawn and it's not just about the pawn um, when that pawn goes you know the bishop is coming in combined with the queen and the rook here and there's just a deadly attack that cannot be stopped so this pawn is like the key defender if there was time for the knight to make two moves from here to here, then black could continue to play on in this position, but uh, but uh, black only gets one move. So, for example, this actually knight h6 is one of the best tries here. Bishop takes e5, check. King drops back to g8. And now it's not about uh, grabbing the knight here because uh, the bishop is hanging too. Now the key move is uh, queen to f6. And uh, there's no way to stop the mating threats except by uh, giving up materials. For example, uh, the chess subject is suggesting queen takes e5. So uh, Nazi Paikidze stays in the lead with this nice win. Um, let's see. One other uh, interesting tactic I wanted to show you. This was uh, a wild game. This is the game Alyssa Melikina 
against uh, Tatev Abrahamian. It was a uh, French win hour. And uh, I, w I would have liked to cover this game, but it was just uh, way too complicated. <laughs> so uh, uh, anyway, um, uh, Alyssa Malakina played a gambit line of the, the win hour, the 92 line where, where white gambit's a pawn, and uh, <clears throat> gets a very active piece play. And you can see that uh, she's got her pieces out. Um, and uh, and eh, Black's King, I guess, is still managing to hold on here. I guess uh, um, Tatev Abrahamian has organized a successful defense here against uh, against the uh, the activity of White's pieces. So Melikina right here tries the move um, Rook to D4, hitting the Queen. And so this is your uh, second uh, <clears throat> tactical quiz here. Uh, see if you can spot the move that uh, Tatev plays that uh, that uh, wins for black. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. Very nice example of uh, ignoring your opponent's threats and making a bigger threat of your own. She played the move e3, hitting the bishop, and now um, and now if the uh, rook takes the queen, then pawn takes bishop and um, this threatening to queen of course so the queen has to come back to defend and bishop to h3 and there's just going to be some loss of material even though uh, even though black has sacrificed a queen black is going to get a, a queen back here and will be a piece up at the end of all of that so that's just winning um, let's see uh, Alyssa didn't take the queen but tried um, bishop to g3 Another tactical uh, move here, just uh, shifting the emphasis to this pawn. The queen now has to move. The queen went to um, uh, c5. And uh, let's see, rook to c4 was played, chasing the queen. The queen went to e5, and then rook takes f4, so getting the, the bishop out of trouble. And uh, the game continued, but um, yeah, black is just better in this position. So um, a good example of how you can uh, get your queen out of trouble with this uh, counter threat with that pawn push to e3. Yeah, so Tatev Abrahamian also went on to uh, win that game. So uh, let's check out the standings here. Uh, on the men's side, uh, yeah, Fabiano drew and uh, Wesley won. So um, they're now tied at five and a half points each. Ray Robson is half point behind at five points and Hikaru Nakamura with that win is uh, one point behind the leaders. So after seven rounds, there's, there's four more rounds to go. It's still possible for uh, Hikaru to catch up. Uh, so he hasn't, hasn't given up yet. It's nice to see him making a late pu push after a kind of a weak start. And uh, well, it looks like there'll be some interesting fighting chess in the remaining rounds. Um, on the, the women's side, we have Here we go. Cross table. We have uh, Nazi Paikidzi and Tatev Abrahamian in the lead at five and a half points. And Irina Krush, uh, they both won their games today, so they are uh, setting a, a pretty fast pace. Uh, Irina Krush could only manage a draw today, so she was at, she's at five points, half point off the pace. And uh, uh, Anna Zatonsk also won, so she's at five points, also half point off the pace. On the women's side, uh, five games out of six were decisive, and on the men's side, uh, four games out of six were decisive in this round. So uh, <laughs> lots of uh, lots of points won and lost. Um, okay, exciting chess ahead. Stay tuned, and I will see you soon. Bye.